we still have 96 more minutes. You guys able to tolerate me for that long? Jessica? So I'm going to keep saying that the warehouses aren't identical, but suppose that we had, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know if the fires had a question like this, but um, what if there were boxes instead, and we said identical books and identical boxes? If they were, instead of warehouses, they were boxes mm -hmm. that looked identical? Mm -hmm. Um... Then, then, all, then the only thing you care about is, um, and, and the books are all uh, identical. identical, right? So identical book, books going into identical boxes uh, just basically means I need to, to be told three numbers, which tells me how many books to put into the boxes. Um, but the numbers that you give me are not ordered because... Um, you're not saying the first number is how many to put in the first box and the second number is how many to put in the second box. So it's an unordered list of three numbers and those numbers could be all the same too. Um, you know, or, or two of the three numbers could be the same. So it's, um, but they have to add up to 3,000. So you're asking for how many... I'm not trying to make this really complicated. I just didn't know if it's something we've seen before or not. No. No, I, I don't think it makes a lot of realistic sense most of the time. So, um, let's just not go there. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to confuse people. I could think about how to, there's probably a way to phrase the question. Um, I'll think about it as we're, as we're talking along here, but I don't, I don't think I want to open that can of worms too far. So it would be like n times 3,000 minus n, and then times 3,000 minus that number. Whatever. Sounds good. Whatever, whatever she said. Okay. I don't know. Okay. There you go. That sounds very, that, that sounds like an answer that would be impressive. Um, do you think we're having long? I, don't, I have another question I want to show you. This is number 10 on the review sheet. Let's evaluate the summation k going from 0 to n minus 1 of negative 1 to the k times n choose k plus 1. We want to evaluate that sum. So let's everybody take 30 seconds quietly to think about, just think to yourself for a minute, what part of the semester, what chapter, what topic is this? And then we'll, I'll take an answer in a minute, and then we will start trying to tackle it and see what we can come up with. So we're evaluating a summation. It appears to be alternating positive, negative, positive, negative. It's got the binomial coefficients in it. So does anybody think they know what topic from the semester this has to do with? Exactly, it's the binomial mirror. So the very first thing I would do, before you don't have to try to figure out the whole problem in one breath, but first thing I would do before I try to come up with an answer here is just write down the binomial thing. Let's just write that. First of all, it's probably going to be worth a little bit of partial credit just to say, that you're going to use the binomial theorem, and here's what that theorem says. So for the solution, we're going to use the binomial theorem. And uh, what does the binomial theorem say? Okay. X plus y to the n equals a summation. You remember the terms, Elizabeth? K goes from 0 to n of? tell that it needs a little work before it's going to give us the thing we want, but at least we have the theorem written down. Okay. So what do you suggest that I could maybe do with the binomial theorem that would help me to get towards the solution? 
solution. Lisa. Can we change? I, I was thinking of changing either all the n's to n minus ones or all the k's to k plus ones. Um, well, that's not quite the same, doing the same thing. So changing n to some other number is perfectly fine. Okay. So you could change the n to something else. If you change the k, you're actually changing something that's not a fixed number to begin with. That's just the index of the summation. So, so I would change the n to n minus 1 so we can have that summation from k equals 0 to n minus 1. So can we choose y to equal negative 1? Another idea, we could choose y to equal negative 1 which will give us a negative 1 to the k. Okay, so I heard two things and they both sound great. Okay, so there's no reason why I can't do them both. So, uh, but I want to do them one at a time, please. So, let me start with your thing because it sounded a little tricky. You wanted to change the n to an n minus 1? Yes. Okay, so let's just see what that gives us. This is a summation k from 0 to n minus 1. n minus 1 choose k, x to the n minus 1 minus k times y to the k. And why did you want to do that then? Because we want, because in what we want to evaluate, we want the summation to be k equals z from 0 to n minus 1. Mm -hmm. Oh, so now you've got 0 to n minus 1. Yeah. So you've got the limits of the summation to be what you want. Um, but, of course, you don't have the right looking thing here, though. Because right. this doesn't look like that. So we have to think about that a little bit. Um, but let's take uh, Jenna's idea, so we can take y and change it to negative 1. So this is a summation, k from 0 to n minus 1. n minus 1 choose k. x to the n minus 1 minus k times negative 1 to the k. So we've got that part in there. What do you suppose we want to plug in for x? Mm -hmm. 1. If we plug in 1 for x, then of course on the left side I have 0. 0 equals the summation, k going from 0 to n minus 1, of n minus 1 choose k times negative 1 to the k. Man, it's not really that far off from what we want. It's an n minus 1 right there. So can you guys all read that? So this is just the summation from 0 to n minus 1, of n minus 1 choose k times negative 1 to the k. That has to add up to 0. Yeah, Lisa? Will we be using that, I can't think of the name of it, it's like Thurgood's Thur Thur formula or something like that? I think, I think I know what you're thinking too. Does anybody, can anybody think of it, Pat, uh, Peter? Is it like that, that will you write out the summation uh -huh. um, of the uh, n minus 1 to k from 0 to that? That is exactly what the warm up that we did in class. Warm up that we go to n to k plus 1. The thing we did in the uh, in class was the uh, Pascal's formula, Pascal's formula right? Uh -huh. So the that's what you were thinking of, yeah. I think. Uh, so this thing is really n choose k plus. Um, well, Pascal's formula would just be oops, no, n choose k minus one. Uh, but then you can take this one and break it, or sorry, this one and break it down. You basically, what we ended up with was. Um, k minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus k choose k minus 1 plus dot 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 all the way up to n choose k minus 1 equals to that, right? Yeah. So we want n minus 1 choose k. So we can, we can change these uh, numbers, like I can change this to an n and I can change this to a k minus 1 if I want or a k plus 1, I guess. Is that going to give us what we want? The only thing is the signs don't alternate. It's all positives. Over here we have plus minus plus minus. So I don't know about that. Was the step correct changing n to n minus one? Um, you know, I, this might actually work. This is not the way I did the problem, but I'm trying to think, and I haven't figured it out yet, whether this actually will work yet. It might. I mean, you're trying to evaluate the sum. I obviously can change this to n minus 1 choose k plus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k by Pascal's formula. And then if I split that into two terms, one of those two terms is exactly what we're trying to evaluate. But 
but then there's another term there, which is the um, n minus 1 choose k plus 1 term. So we can add that to both sides of the equation? Well, actually what you could do is you could just simply say, look, okay, so this is, this is n minus 1 choose k plus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. This term here, the n minus 1 choose k, can you negative 1 over k? That's just this, right? Which adds up to what? Zero. It's not even there, is it? So actually, you can almost pretend like you're going to drop that term. And that's going to leave you with the summation k going from 0 to n minus 1, negative 1 to the k times n minus 1 choose k plus 1. So what you've done is you've taken the original problem and replaced it with kind of a similar problem that's the same except that the n is now n minus 1. But otherwise, otherwise it's pretty much the same. Meaning I could kind of do, I could play this trick again, I think. I think you could probably do it again. Um, So this thing right here could be broken down into two more terms, right? So you'd have one term which would be n minus 2 choose k plus 1 plus n minus 2 choose k. Is this how you do it? No. Okay. I'm thinking about the following ideas that you guys gave me and just seeing if we can make it work. I'll show you how I did it in a minute. Um, the n minus 2 choose k piece, can we get it from here? Yeah, if we just change this to change this to an n minus two, right? I think this would work. I think you can kind of like step by step reduce this problem to a smaller binomial coefficient, and then do it again, and then do it again, and then do it again. Um, but I I think it's going to be a lot of steps with a dot 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 in the middle of it somewhere. But I think it will work. Uh, but let me show you something else. Maybe I'll look a little bit better. <laughs> so, I'm just, just to be honest, so I haven't actually tried this way of doing it, so I don't actually know how it worked out. Um, it, might, it might very well work out. But another way, to, another way to do this, guys, is to just look at, let's go back to the original problem real quick. And choose k plus 1. Let's just write out a few of the terms. Just write out what some of the terms look like. So when k is equal to 0, we get n choose 1. And when k is equal to 1, we get a negative of n choose 2. And then when k is 2, we get a positive n choose 3. And it's just an alternating sequence, right? And eventually the last term is going to be negative 1 to the n minus 1 times n choose n. Right? Now if we go back to the binomial theorem again, let's go back to the original binomial theorem that we have. Okay? I like that idea of using 1 and negative 1 for x and y because you'll get 0 here. So I'm going to plug in x equals 1, y equals negative 1. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have a summation, k going from 0 to n, n choose k, negative 1 to the k. So the binomial theorem tells us that. We've seen this before, actually. We've done this before. And this, if we just write out the terms of this, this is what we already know is true. If k is 0, we get n choose 0. If k is 1, we get minus n choose 1. When k is 2, we get positive n choose 2. And so on and so forth. It's an alternating series. You'll notice, so this is known to add up to 0. And the question is, compare that with what we're trying to evaluate. Right? By the way, the last term over here is what? Um, 
negative 1 to the n times n choose n. And so this adds up to 0. So does anybody see what I can do? Go ahead. Subtract n choose 0 to the other side and multiply by negative 1. And we'll okay. get exactly that. So in other, words, in other words, take all of this stuff here and move it to the other side of the equation. If you move all of this stuff in red to the other side of the equation, it'll become a positive n choose 1 minus an n choose 2 plus an n choose 3. It's exactly that up there. And notice the power on the negative 1. If I move this negative 1 to the n to the other side, you'll throw in another minus sign, which means it will go to opposite parity. So it's n minus 1 or n plus 1. doesn't matter thing. which way you write it. It's the same thing, right? So if you moved all of this to the other side, it gives you exactly that. And so what does all of this red stuff add up to when I move to the other side? Right, just n choose 0, which is 1. So this is equal to, I'll just say it's equal to n choose 0, which is equal to 1. So this is the key step. This is the binomial error. That's by the binomial error. Jeff? Okay. Yeah, you can also re-index it, right? So in other words, um, this original, in fact, that's a very good way to think about it too, is just, just say instead of summing k from 0 to n minus 1, create another variable such as l, which could be um, k minus 1 or something, uh, k plus 1, right? And so then l would go from, if k is 0, l is 1, and if k is n minus 1, then L is n, and then this becomes minus 1 to the k, which is L minus 1, times n choose L, right? And so that's just re-indexing it in a form that is um, What's in basically, yeah. Which is to add the first term. It's, it's basically what's in red, yeah. We, we just don't have an L equals zero term now. Yeah, so that's annoying. Yeah, that, that's fine. I don't mind that, that way of doing it. So. so, you know, it doesn't hurt sometimes with the binomial theorem to write out some of the terms. You can kind of guess. Because it's alternating, that's what makes you want to guess that one of the variables should be a negative, or negative one in this case. Um, and then you have to plug something in for the other variable too. So we just tried one and negative one and it gave us the information that we needed. That was really the key step. The key step was to take the binomial theorem and write it down and then plug in values for x and y. It would give you a series that resembled the series you're being asked to evaluate. And from there you can figure it out. You have to do a little finagling. You have to take this red stuff and move to the other side of the equation. But that's basically it. That's basically it at that point. Okay. Alrighty, so far so good. Well, let's change gears again. Um, let's, do, let's do something a little more quick. Um, do number eight on the review sheet. Kind of jumping around a little bit. How many permutations? How many permutations of the alphabet, meaning all 26 letters of the alphabet, uh, contain none of the words, none of the words spin, uh, games, Path or net. I think there's something like this on the review packet as well, so you might have studied this already a little bit, but um, it's a nice little example. So you're just going to take the alphabet, one copy of the alphabet, and make a random string of like 26. And we probably know how many such strings there are, but we want to know how many of those strings don't have any of these words kind of sitting inside of them. Can that make sense? Thoughts?
thoughts about how you might tackle it? I heard, I'm going to hold you down for a second, unless you have a question. You have, an, you have a way of doing it, but I want to get other people. Trenton, do you have an idea? I don't need a final answer yet. Just kind of how would you, what's the general approach or strategy here? Uh, yeah, out of the way is possible and subtract those. From? From the total possible. Okay, what is the total number of possible permutations? It's a string of length 26, right? It's like a license plate that has 26 uh, characters in it. So that would be? Can I use the same letter more than once? Well, it, the, the point is, I, I sort of said it, I didn't write it. How many permutations of the alphabet? You have to assume that's just one copy of every letter. So um, you can't keep repeating the same letter again and again. So for the solution, there are so if I know that there's only one copy of every letter, then how many of them would there be? Correct. Good. So there are, very good. So there are 26 factorial permutations of the alphabet. Um, so Dr. Evans, they can have S, T, I, N, but they just can't have them together? Right, right. The word spin with those four letters together is a bad um, configuration. Okay, so this is the total. So I like the idea uh, of subtracting violations from that, right? How am I going to set up the notation for my uh, doing my subtracting? Peter. So you've got the uh, set A. Uh-huh. Okay, so this is a set of permutations that do have spin in them. Okay? Same thing for the others, right? Okay, so B, I won't make you, I won't make you uh, explain the whole thing. So you have four of these sets though, right? And the games, and then the next one is path. And then the last one is uh, net. Okay. All right, so we have A, B, C, and D, like that. And the violations that we want to subtract would be what? In terms of these sets. The union of them, right? Not the intersection, the union of them. So we need to calculate the union because this union is going to be the violation, violations um, to be subtracted. So eventually we'll subtract. This. Make sure if you're doing violations that you're subtracting that you don't forget to subtract them at the end of the problem. So 26 factorial is the starting number, and from that we're taking away the violations so we have to subtract. But for right now, I just want to calculate this. Okay, so there are a whole lot of terms here, and um, I don't want to actually write out the general formula for four sets, because it's, it's a long expression. But let's just start working. We, we know the formula, right? The first thing is we add the individual sets. So the size of the set A is just how many permutations do have this word spin in them? Does anybody have an answer for that? 23 factorial. How do you get that, Peter? 23 factorial. 26 minus 4, because it's been 4 letters, so okay. 22. But that's the word spin, you can mark that word together, that one space, so that's 22. Correct. The word spin is like a whole block. It's like one letter. You have 22 individual letters, other than these four, plus the block that you've made out of spin, that's 23 total um, things to arrange, correct? It's like the problems of the photographs where the certain people have to stand next to each other. You glue them together, right? So we're gluing these four letters together and making one word out of that. So the uh, size of A is 23 factorial. Does everybody follow that? Because it's basically going to be that same reasoning for all of this. Okay, what's the size of set B, Adrienne?
So games is one letter longer, so we have a block of five, so there's only 21 individual letters plus the block. So 22 factorial things to arrange. Very good. Um, Lisa, how about the size of set C? 23 factorial. That's the same as uh, spin, so 23 factorial. And Jeff, how about the size of set D? 24 factorial, good. Okay. And now, are we done? No, we have the two-way intersections. By the way, just for my information, how many two-way intersections are there? Four choose two. Four choose two, which is? Six. six. Exactly. So there are six two-way intersections, and we have to do them all. You want to be kind of quick with some of these, like five choose two, six choose three, you know. If I ask you what is, you know, um, 20 choose 18, we should be able to get that really fast. Because 20 choose 18 is, first of all, the first thing I do with that is change it to 20 choose 2. And then you just simply factorial down two steps and factorial up two steps. You get 190, right? You can do that in your head. So some of these numbers you just be able to, I mean, you don't usually need to simplify your answers, but it's just helpful that you kind of have an idea like, what the size of some of these numbers is. Yes. So that's a that's just an example. Um, okay, so A intersect B. How many permutations have both spin and games in them? Can't do it? Why not, please? You have two S's, so you can't do it? No, but then can. How would you do it? Game spin. Game spin all back to back, right? And one big, huge block would work. So in other words, they both have S's, but you can share the S. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters. So there's um, 18 individual letters plus this one block. So that would be 19 factorial, right? Yeah, Jessica? How much explanation do you want for each piece of this? I might, um, well, I haven't written anything down yet. Uh, probably just one term of, of the whole thing at most, because there's going to be, how many terms are there going to be? Four. Well, there's four choose one ways to pick an individual set. Then there's going to be four choose two pairwise intersections. Four choose three three-way intersections. And four choose four was the intersection of all of them. That's four plus six plus four plus one, which is 15 terms. And I wouldn't want 15 explanations, right? So what you could do is right here on the 23 factorial, you could say uh, permute 22 individual letters and one block for spin. And you could just write that down. It could be real, really rough and brief. Yeah. Not really. Uh, if you wrote game spin and pointed at 19 factorial, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. I know it. I know it. You're, you just have to convince me you know what's going on. The fact that you get 19 factorial right tells me something that you probably have an idea of what you're doing. Um, you know, I didn't just guess 19. Right? So, okay, so minus 19 factorial. What about A intersect C? Zero. Why is it zero? Right, this P is, is, is um, kind of landlocked by the S and the I. You can't put the path with that. So that's minus 0. And then A intersect D? How do we do that one? Spin at, right? So spin at, that is a six letter word. So you have 20 <laughs> individual letters plus the one block. So that's 21 factorial. Okay, how about uh, B intersect C? So gains and path. No, can do. Can't do it because a. there's a common A that's impossible to use for both words. Uh, how about B and D? Zero. There's an E, right? Gives us into trouble. And then C and D? 